Welcome to the training module on the MC100 LVEP34 clock generation chip by On Semiconductor. In this module, I will discuss the logic diagrams, timing diagrams, clock distribution tree, as well as some key features. The MC100 LVEP34 is a low skew DIV2, DIV4, and DIV8 clock generation chip designed explicitly for low skew clock generation applications. The internal dividers are synchronous to each other, therefore the common output edges are all precisely aligned. The VBB pin, an internally generated voltage supply, is available to this device only. For single ended input conditions, the unused differential input is connected to VBB as a switch in reference voltage. VBB may also re-bias AC coupled inputs. When used, decoupled VBB and VCC via 0.01 .01 microfarad capacitor and limit current sourcing or sinking to 0.5 milliamps. When not used, VBB should be left open. The common enable pin is synchronous so that the internal dividers will only be enabled or disabled when the internal clock is already in the low state. This avoids any chance of generating a run clock pulse on the internal clock when the device is enabled or disabled as can happen with an asynchronous control. An internal run pulse could lead to losing synchronization between the internal divider stages. The internal enable flip-flop is clocked on the following edge of the input clock. Therefore, all associated specification limits are reference to the negative edge of the clock input. Upon startup, the internal flip-flops will attain a random state. The master reset input allows for the synchronization of the internal dividers as well as multiple LVEP34s in a system. Single-ended clock input operation is limited to VCC greater than or equal to 3.0 volts in PECL mode or VEE less than or equal to minus 3 volts in NECL mode. There are two distinct functional relationships between the master reset and clock. The enable signal will freeze the internally divided flip-flops on the first fallen edge of the clock after its assertion. The internal divider flip-flops will maintain their state during the freeze. When enable is deasserted or low and after the next fallen edge of clock, then the internal divider flip-flops will unfreeze and continue their next state count with proper phase relation. This is the continuation of the previous slide. In this slide, we show MR in deasserted mode or high to low. After the clock has transitioned low, the outputs will follow the third ensuring clock rising edge. Here we show typical reset recovery graph of the MC100 LVEP34 device. Case 1 refers to when MR occurs at high side of clock signal, and case 2 refers to the situation when MR occurs at the low side of the clock signal. This slide shows the curve for output voltage by frequency. As you can see, when the device operates in divide by 2, the output voltage curve is constant at 700 millivolts as long as the frequency is between 600 to 700 megahertz. The output voltage curve starts going downwards as frequency increases. When the device operates as a divide by 4 or 8, the output voltage is constant again at 700 millivolts regardless of the frequency. This is a typical termination for this ECL output driver which is implemented between the driver's device and the receiver device. The skew introduced by logic devices can be divided into three parts, duty cycle skew, output to output skew, and part to part skew. Depending on the specific application, each of the three components can be of equal or overriding importance. The duty cycle skew is a measure of the difference between the T sub PLH and T sub PHL propagation delays. Duty cycle skew is important in the applications where timing operations occur on both edges or when the duty cycle of the clock signal is critical. This slide addresses the output to output skew. Output to output skew is defined as the difference between the propagation delays of all the outputs of a device. ECL devices provide superior performance in all three areas of skew over the TTL or CMOS competitors. A skew reducing mechanism common to all skew parameters 
is the faster propagation delays of ECL devices. The clock distribution in an ECL system is a relatively trivial matter. In this slide we show a two-level clock distribution tree which produces nine differential ECL clocks on six different cards. The devices also provide a multiplex clock input for incorporating a high-speed system clock and a low-speed test or scan clock within the same distribution tree. The ECL NPSE111 device is used to receive the signals from the backplane and distribute it on the card. The worst case skew between all 54 clocks in the situation would be 275 picoseconds, assuming that all loads and signal traces are equalized.